In this video, I want to share with you how you can boost your productivity and be less stressed as an artist. For a long time, I felt utterly overwhelmed by the amount of work I had to do as a professional artist, be it painting, marketing, video making or shipping my art. In fact, it used to stress me so much that my stomach ached whenever I thought about all the things I needed to do. And I was anxious and stressed all of the time. Obviously, you don't have to be a professional artist to have a busy and chaotic life. Maybe you have kids, a part-time job, or study and make art as a hobby. Then it's even more challenging to set time apart for creative endeavors. For me, it went so far that I was afraid it might affect my health in the long run. So I developed a method to manage my work in a way that I will still love it and feel satisfied with it. As a result, on the first day of every month, I write a carefully thought out plan to organize my workload and set time apart for myself. Of course, making a plan is nothing new, but most people do it wrong. And when they try to stick to their poorly written plans, inevitably they will fail and end up feeling disappointed with themselves. But if they would write a realistic and well-organized plan instead, they would have the key to a stress-free everyday life. So let me tell you how to make a plan that works. First, you need a physical plan on paper that stays up on your workspace and which you can check each morning when you get up. You need to have your plan in sight so that you're automatically reminded to look at it. To make the best plan possible, start by writing down every task that you want to get done that month on a separate sheet of paper and mark those with the highest priority. If you have many repeating tasks each month, you could also use an app instead of writing them down. I personally like to work with a website called Todoist. By the way, I'm not sponsored by them, which allows me to make a neat, organized to-do list for each month that I can access from everywhere. I find it useful because I have many repeating tasks each month that I tend to forget. I have a Patreon page where I offer things like tutorial videos and original art, and I participate in monthly auctions in an artist collective. These tasks are the same every month, but they are so many that I easily forget them, so I created a template that I can reuse without having to start over each month. I used to print out a list for that, but I didn't like that approach as much. I can also check the Todoist list a few times each month to assure myself that I haven't forgotten something important and I get the added satisfaction of crossing out even more tasks. Now, after having written down all the tasks you want to do, Get a large notebook and list each day of the month in two rows. It doesn't have to look pretty, because we are going to cross out and change up things during the month anyways. Every good plan allows for flexibility and changes. First, you want to schedule tasks with the highest priority. For example, work hours as soon as you know them, deadlines for projects, be it personal or professional, appointments or if you have any holidays coming up, then they go on this plan too. Always set apart more time for each task than you think you need. Because guess what? You will be wrong. You never know if your family comes over for a surprise visit or you want to go out with friends and things just don't work out as planned and you end up working longer on a project. And as mentioned in my last video, you never want to rush an art piece. So give yourself enough time for it. On some days, you also might have low energy and don't get as much done as you wanted to. So instead of stressing about it, allow yourself more time for each task. This will work out because sometimes things don't need as much time as you thought and then they can balance out others that require more. I've tried this approach myself for a few months and it worked out really well. Don't forget to schedule free time for yourself too. I add a few days for myself on which I can procrastinate, do stuff around the house and generally do things I love. If my family or partner needs help, these days are also great for that. And speaking of planning, I not only plan my monthly workload, I also plan my paintings in advance. For that I use Photoshop and recently also Procreate. And if you want to learn how to do that too, join me on Patreon on the Advanced Student Reward tier. I just released two new tutorials in which I teach you the most essential functions you need to know to bring your unique visions to life in Photoshop and Procreate. Just follow the link in the comment section and join me on Patreon. Since my life is quite busy, I will never accomplish everything I want. So I list things that I won't be able to do that month under my plan. Being not able to do things like paintings I'm excited about makes me uneasy sometimes. But for some reason, writing them down makes it feel less stressful for me. It's probably a psychological thing. It's like acknowledging that I will do these things but can't right now. 
and that's okay. Now, once you have finished your monthly plan, check it each morning right after you get up. I admit, first I drink my coffee in bed and read the comments you guys write under my YouTube videos. But after that, I check my plan. If you're not living alone and you share resources and space with other human beings, it's absolutely essential to discuss with them what you have planned for the day. If there is just one car everyone uses, house chores that needs to be done, and limited space and time periods for you to paint or craft because you are using the kitchen table for example, a good plan will prevent unnecessary frustration and arguments. Trust me, I speak from experience here. Let your partner, family or roommates know what is important to you. Tell them where you can make compromises and where not and based on that you can adjust your plan to their needs and they can respect your priorities as well as you can respect theirs. Make room for unplanned events too and reschedule if needed. For example, I always move a few things and change them up and my plan evolves over the months. This is why my plans look very ugly at the end of each month. But this just means that I did good work. It often happens that a task carries over several days, but that's okay. I will get rid of other activities to make space for it, but my priority task will get done. And at the end of each day, there is this wonderful satisfaction to proudly cross things off of my list. To follow through with your daily plan is not that difficult either, if you tell the people around you in advance what you're going to do. Because they might hold you accountable for it, and this can give you extra motivation to do your best and maybe even set a good example for everyone. If you still feel overwhelmed or you are living alone and can't plan together with someone else, be kind to yourself. Planning takes practice. The more you do it, the better you will get at it. Trust the process. Also, break complicated tasks up into smaller ones at the beginning of each day. You can also divide them into things you want to do before and after lunch. Things I like to do in pajamas, for example, like writing this video script, is a before lunch and after dinner activity. But going out would be an only after lunch activity. It's also smart breaking up tasks when it will make it easier to fulfill them. For example, if I want to paint that day and I also need to get groceries and go to dog school, it makes sense to group the activities that take place outside of my studio together so that I only have to go out once and can focus on painting. Sometimes you might have lots of small things and they could be a real time waster if you're not being smart about in which order you accomplish them. If you are new to making plans, you will take on way too many things at first. Be prepared for that. It took me years to accept that what I wanted to get done is not what I will actually get done. So instead of trying to accomplish 10 things per day, I only schedule 3 to 4. Another thing that I like to do, especially if I can't move forward with a task for whatever reason, is to draw a little loading bar next to it. So I know I have already done a little bit of work on that, but for now I have to continue with something different. This gives me some sort of satisfaction and I don't feel I have an unfinished task luring in my unconscious mind. It also helps me to move on and to see what else I could do in the meantime. The great thing with this planning method is that I don't procrastinate that much, because I can always check what I need to do next and in case I finished my work unexpectedly early, I can and will do absolutely nothing or only things I like to do. I have a million things I could do and work 50 hours a day and still don't be finished. But with a plan, I don't have to and I will gladly watch TikTok for 3 hours in a row if I did my work for that day, because guess what, there will be new work next day. And this wraps up the basics of my planning process, which proved to work really well for me. And I hope it will work for you too. This practice gives me more control. I feel that I used my time the best way possible. And I became more productive as well. It has to be said though, that I have a ESTJ personality and my planning method might not work for all personalities. So let me know what practices or changes to my method would work for you. I'm also curious to know if some of you do journaling and how this is different from what I do as I have never looked into the whole journaling thing. These journals always seemed a bit over the top for me. I enjoy practical plans, even if they are not that pretty. Especially with the handwriting like mine. And there is seldom something more satisfying than crossing off a finished task off a to-do list. And with that being said, I wish you a wonderful and organized day and I see you in the next video. Bye!